The life of a goalkeeper is seldom easy. He exists in isolation, alone with his thoughts. One slip and the ultimate price is paid. Frequently the villain, rarely the hero. Detached from the action. An afterthought amidst the glory. Peter Schmeichel, though, was different from other goalkeepers. Big, strong personality. He's like in a zone, in his own zone. He had everything, and then he wanted to win every time. The top people have certain ways about them, and uh, he had it in abundance. He'd give you the biggest rollicking in training. Give you the biggest rollicking out on the pitch. He wasn't bothered because all he all he was bothered about is clean sheets. Everything he'd done, it wasn't in the book. It was not in the goalkeeping book. Must come down as one of the best goalkeepers of all time. We were a decent team, but we wasn't. We weren't the great, great team. We have been always been in the shadow from the team from '84 and '86. So now we have a chance to come out of the shadow. We are going to go there and do our very best, um, and we did. Sweden, June 1992, in Gothenburg's Ulevi Stadium, Denmark met Germany in the final of the European Championships. It would be one of football's greatest upsets, though for Denmark, it nearly didn't happen at all. Having finished runners-up in qualifying, the Danes were given a place in the tournament at the expense of the former Yugoslavia, due to the ongoing civil war in that country at the time. Under the stewardship of Richard Moller Nielsen, though, Denmark were not without their critics. Journalists, press, everyone, they were saying, oh, do you think you score a goal there? Do you think uh, you can get a point even? Uh, and uh, many said, oh, it was better if we stay at home. Such an attitude was anathema to Peter Schmeichel. Moen's Kroch was his understudy at the time, and as such, fed directly from Schmeichel's belief. He was uh, one of the guys that set the standard for that. Uh, the belief of we can do it, even though we are a very small country, that he was, uh, he, he was a man that said that for the first time. We were very, very confident. Schmeichel's confidence was justified. In their final group match, Denmark faced Michel Platini's much-fancied France. I think they, they uh, hadn't lost uh, one single match for 26 or 27 matches. But uh, that, uh, that evening we had a fantastic support from the, the Danish, a lot of Danish people, and uh, we, were, we were beating them 2-1. Uh, it was a very great evening. I was invited by Michel Platini to play a uh, Partners Cup golf tournament. He came up to me and said, I have not forgotten 92, because we were supposed to win it, he said. It still hurts. And, and that's how crazy the whole thing turned out to be, that, that, that we were able to do that. As the tournament intensified, so did the challenge. To reach the final, the Danes would have to defeat the reigning European champions. From Boston, Gullit and uh, all of them. I, I used to say that Hitchcock couldn't have uh, uh, instructed uh, a, a better match. I've spoken to Ruud many times since that, uh, and he said they were surprised at how good we were in that match. That's a one match, I would say, where we played extremely well. Because we played well, we were very, very confident that we could win the penalty shootout. I saved, I, I think it was the second one, but it was very early on, and uh, it gave us, you know, even more confidence. We, I mean, we, we just rode our luck in that penalty shootout. But that, that's, when you're confident... Um, that, you know, it happens like that.
you look back and you think, hmm, how could he do that? The step up, you know, just rolls the ball in very arrogantly. In that particular moment, it was brilliant. And you think, wow, anything is possible. The final brought the toughest test of all, the reigning world champions. Somewhat against the run of play, though, John Jensen gave the Danes a surprise lead. We didn't play well. We were defending all the time, so it came on the right moment. Because after that, we believe that we have a chance to win against Germany. Schmeichel, too, more than played his part. He kept us in the game. The save he made from Jürgen Klinsmann, the header he made, it was unbelievable. It was amazing and a very important save at that moment. With 12 minutes remaining, Kim Vilfort sealed a famous win for the Danes, despite their tactics having been far from all out attack. Every time we got the ball, got into the German half, couldn't find someone to pass it to, players would turn around, pass it back to me, I would pick it up. How can you win football matches like that? The best moment for me of the final was, of course, the final whistle. We wouldn't have done that if it wasn't for Peter. So I have had uh, so many great uh, experiences with the national team, maybe because of Peter. Totally crazy that we could do that. Because we weren't in it to begin with. It's still, if you think back, it's very difficult to find a reason for, or some logic in it. Why did that happen? Some players um, played more than 100% and they were up here. Uh, and that was very important because if we haven't been up there, we would have never been winning the 92 championship. And one of them was Peter Smike. On the outskirts of Copenhagen lies Gladzak's commune, home to the housing project known as Gladzak's Heights. Beneath the ominous gaze of a thousand watchful eyes, it was here that Peter Boleslaw Schmeichel laid the foundations for a memorable footballing career. Initially raised down the road in Budinger, he and his siblings held Polish citizenship until 1970, when they and their father took on Danish nationality. For Danish football, it was a pivotal moment. Fate had lent an almighty hand, and Schmeichel's pursuit of the dream began in time-honoured fashion. From um, the very, very first day I ever went to a football practice, I was in goal and uh, I stayed there ever since. After school every day, we met up um, on the pitches and we were playing and we all had favourite players, favourite clubs. And uh, Mine was Manchester United and I thought, well, I look a little bit like Gary Bailey. And um, So he was one of them. Peter Shilton was another one. I said this many time, at times. Tony Schumacher, the, the German goalkeeper, I know despite what he did in one particular match, I thought he was, he was brilliant. And then, of course, Sepp Meyer. The young Dane himself, though, was catching the eye and was approached by local side Hero, once again in the shadow of the Gladzax projects. Journalist Niels Rasmussen, on the playing staff at the time, saw Schmeichel's future skills already on display. He has an enormous amount of, of confidence in himself, uh, and of course that is that, and uh, he's never been afraid. He had a, a bit of temper already at that time. And another thing was how he picked up the ball and threw it at 45, 60 metres sometimes. It looked like nothing. It seemed so simple for him to do that, and said, "How does he do that?" Uh, but I, I think you you couldn't learn anything from it because it was just the way he played. I was a goalkeeper as well uh, at that time, and uh, as I used to to joke, um, I could retire because Peter was there to take over, and uh, I think that was a very good idea. <laughs> Everything appeared to be falling into place, but as an amateur, Schmeichel needed to make ends meet. A succession of jobs ensued, from factory work to advertising. And in the heart of Copenhagen, he worked for the World Wildlife Fund, alongside Tommy Dubrow. 
And my first memory was that he was a very good worker. Of course, we uh, spoke mostly about football. And he then uh, played in an amateur club called Hero. And he uh, was in WWF primarily to earn money for his interest. He was amateur. So when he was prof became professional in Vidal, I think, uh, he left us. And later, uh, 10 years after he left us, uh, he wrote this article in our magazine. Uh, it means that he still supports us. It was a very, very good memory for me. Uh, I, I, I can tell my grandchildren that I have uh, worked together with Peter Schmeichel, the, the famous Dane. At Hero, Schmeichel had benefited from the knowledge of the former Danish international goalkeeper, Per Poulsen. But the time had come to bow to the inevitable, a first professional contract. He didn't have far to move, joining Vidor, a couple of goal kicks away from Gladzaks. At 21, he was well on the road to achieving his goal, to be his country's and ultimately the world's number one. First day, and in his mind, he could be the best keeper in the world. Looking back, I think I had the right sort of introduction into football. I, I started lower level, I, I moved up. Uh, obviously, playing in, in, in Bromby the last four years in Denmark uh, that I played in Denmark was, was um, you know, completely different to anything I've ever played in Denmark. Schmeichel arrived at Bromby in 1987, and then there was no doubting his ability, there were question marks surrounding his character. John Jensen was a teammate at the time. My first impression was that um, maybe a little bit arrogant uh, because um, he believed in himself so much that was unbelievable. It was like, here's a goalkeeper who's going to be the best in the world, even before he sees his, his season has started at rugby. When he was young, he was little, well, I, I do everything, I know everything, I'm the, but, but he is, uh, he's, he's, he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy in, uh, uh, he's completely different uh, outside and then inside. But he, when he goes in there, he, he wants to win every time in training and game. Arrogance or assurance, conviction or conceit, Schmeichel's mindset has forever begged the question. The answer often lies in the presence or not of one revealing symptom. My first match as a professional footballer ever was uh, a quarterfinals in what's now the Champions League against Porto at the Dazantes st Stadium in, um, in Porto. 80,000 people there and uh, the largest crowd I've ever played for was 8,000. I was so nervous I was hoping that we got stuck in traffic. I was hoping that the coach would turn around. I was really scared and... Um, as we walked before the match through the tunnel to, 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 uh, to view the pitch, I sort of decided that it's crazy because this is what you've worked for. These are the games you want to play. And I decided I would never be nervous again. That was a stepping stone for me. That was something that, that I could you know, physically take and work on. So those are the kind of matches I want to play. But ten years later, I can see back again and say, it was not an arrogant, it was a complete Peter Smile who wants exactly know what he wants in the future. And that was to be number one in the world. Decision made. Schmeichel accepted, adapted and succeeded in helping Bromby to five trophies in four years. It was only a matter of time before the phone rang. And when it did, it was almost too good to be true. But anything that's happened before or after uh, that moment is possibly the, the, the biggest moment for me because that was my, that was my dream. From, from when I was nine, I was dreaming about playing for Manchester United and now here you have the club coming after you. That was great. Unbeknown to them at the time, the club was about to become all-conquering and Schmeichel a key player. For some squad members, though, the Great Dane was still something of an unknown quantity. To be perfectly honest, I don't think any of us really knew an awful lot of, uh, of Peter. By now, Steve Bruce was a United stalwart. Certainly, though, I remember the goalkeeping coach at the time, who I think was responsible for bringing Peter to the club, Alan Hodgkinson. Um, I remember him talking about him in, in glowing terms, you know, that you know, when he had signed or he was about to sign, that we'd, we'd signed a really, really top, top goalkeeper. He, he was a really, really nice person very softly spoken and to be honest you, 
you did wonder, because I was used to English goalkeepers, or British goalkeepers, I should say, that whether or not you might have been too nice to being a goalkeeper. I was worried if I was good enough, um, and uh, it, because I knew it's going to be different. The doubts were unfounded. Schmeichel's impact was immediate. Even after his first five or six games, the fans talked to him straight away. It was instant. As soon as he walked through the, the dressing room, he was one of them. Well, I'm Peter Schmeichel, and you know, I'm as big as Man United. That's his attitude, you know. He saw, but when you do, when you are like that, and you've got that presence about you, the one thing you've got to be able to do is keep the goals, and he could do that. Peter Schmeichel had a, had a huge impact on the Premier League. I think a lot of people think he was he was probably Sir Alex Ferguson's best buy ever. Instant impact, undoubtedly, but adjusting to life at Old Trafford was not exactly plain sailing. Coming into England, no breaks anywhere. I mean, just, you came up to Christmas, and and it was crazy. It was just mayhem. It was just uh, Christ. Are, are we going to do this every year? But when you hit the second season and you've been through the whole thing once, and you know what Jan January is like, you know what February is going to be like. Uh, that is where you have to prove yourself. Schmeichel set about doing exactly that, first of all, on the training ground. He had a fierce determination to win. He didn't want a shot at you. He didn't want a shot to save, never mind a goal going in. The biggest crime against Pete was if you dare to try and chip him. But I chipped him, and he went absolutely ballistic. He'd virtually get a hold of the ball and he'll kick it straight at you or hurl it straight at your head or something. He was nasty with that one. Even when I put the ball in the corner, uh, and it was like this already. He was up there. He was up there every time. Peter wanted to be involved, that's for sure. And of course, when he gets involved, the one thing he wanted to do is win it. Fantastic and influence everyone around the realm. And influence actually on opponents too. We have a shootout in the Charity Shield at Wembley. And uh, I remember Joe, George Graham came up to me and said, John, do you want to have a shot on your, on your friend? I said, oh yeah, definitely. He came out to me and said, doesn't matter if I don't take another penalty, but I want to take you as John. And I hit it so bad, so it went under his arm and went into the goal, and I could see Peter, oh, there was his chance. So at least I scored. Many people say only one goal for Arsenal, but in my, in my world it's two, and it was one against Peter Michael, and that's count for many, many years. Allying fierce determination with masterful technique, Schmeichel had become the very blueprint of the modern goalkeeper. He was such a fearsome character. He came out screaming for balls and everybody ducked. Here's the Schmeichel coming along. He said, did this jumping movement of just his arms out like a star jump, and it was unorthodox, but so many times he saved us. He dominated his area, and, not, and he was so fast also. Even being as tall as he is, he was so fast. I think it was great, one against one. His reaction on the line was amazing. Rapid Vienna away in the European Cup. I, I definitely compare it to the Garden Bank save off, off um, Pele. Exactly the same. I can imagine the goalkeeping coaches of the modern era or that era kind of saying, you can't do that, that's not written in a book. He was brave as a lion, he was a good footballer, great balance, he was quick. He was an absolutely wonderful, wonderful goalkeeper who there really wasn't a fault to be had. The world of football is one where actions speak louder than words. The world of Peter Schmeichel was littered with both in equal measure. We knew for 90, 95 minutes that the Big Dane was going to be an absolute nightmare. You can't say, oh, please, will you, because there's no time and they won't hear you. He was shouting a little too much sometimes. You can ask some of his teammates, but I never played in defence, so I don't know nothing about that. He wasn't too bad with me. I, I, I didn't get the brunt of it. Well, he didn't even pick on the little ones. Big Pally and Brucey, they used to get it all the time. Certainly Park's got a, little, a few bashes now and again. Him and Brucey, you know, they lived in the same cul-de-sac in Bramall in Cheshire and those two were at each other all the time. We all got it, we all knew what he was like. Sometimes he went over the top, uh, but I, I rather prefer that than he just stood bad and say nothing. I think most players 
kind of uh, prefer the way that I was because they knew I was there. They knew that I was uh, engaged in, in the match. I, it meant something to me. Um, and it was for 90 minutes. There's nothing after. There was nothing in, uh, before. So it, that was just the way it was. He was more like, you can say, like a manager on the pitch. Um, if it was very f crowded, you cannot hear the manager on the sideline, but you can hear Peter on the pitch. And it was away from it that you get to know the real side. He's a fantastic musician. Uh, Peter likes music and he's good at something. <laughs> he could play the piano and make the hair stand on the back of your neck. He was that good, you know. Let him concentrate on, on the piano or on the drums. Don't think, Peter. Uh, you cannot do that. Uh, Rock and roll. <laughs> I came over, everyone says, first season is easy. It's what you do in the second season that's, uh, that's going to show if you're a good footballer or not. Schmeichel's second season in Manchester saw United claim their first league title in 26 years. The foundations have been laid for the club's most glorious period. It was a long wait, but once it came, it was celebrated and you could just sense it, feel it everywhere. The momentum was indeed all theirs. Manchester United dominated the decade, achieving the league and cup double twice in three years. In the 1999 charge to the treble, you know, you could almost uh, feel the force of his will. You could f almost feel Schmeichel's will, you know, driving that team on from the back. In the last minute of an epic FA Cup semi-final against Arsenal, with the score at 1-1 and United down to 10 men, Schmeichel faced a penalty to keep the treble dream alive. Obviously, if the score did win the game. I didn't know it was, uh, it was the last minute. Obviously, it was a great moment for me personally, but what it did as well, it actually created one of the best and most uh, uh, memorable moments of, uh, of maybe Manchester United history the Ryan Giggs goal. And, and the celebrations, don't forget them. <laughs> United duly secured the league title before adding the FA Cup to the trophy cabinet. But there was still one more bridge to cross. Bayern Munich in Barcelona for the Champions League. In his final game for the club, Schmeichel captained the team but United endured the worst possible start. A combination of good fortune and even better goalkeeping kept them in the game. And in stoppage time, Schmeichel took matters into his own hands. Oh, what a fitting way for him to play, you know, to come up for the corner that caused mayhem, really, caused so much trouble for him. My favourite goal is and will always be the equalising goal in the Champions League final, because that gave us a shot. It was a one-shot moment, and it was unforgettable. And you see him, once we did get the winner, you know, doing a handspring, you know, handspring. I thought Big Peter had done that. But a beautiful goal. Yet another league title followed in Portugal with Sporting Lisbon before Schmeichel returned to England. A season at Aston Villa preceded a move back to the northwest, this time to the blue half of Manchester, where he joined United's great rivals, Manchester City. The European Championships of 2000 saw him captain his country, and he eventually chalked up 129 appearances, by some distance, Denmark's most capped player. I was very, very lucky. I played with great players, players who shared the same ambitions as I had. Frequently voted the world's best goalkeeper and incredibly the scorer of more than a dozen career goals, since retiring, Schmeichel has followed the well-trodden path into media work. Yet despite that European Championship win, his years at Old Trafford linger longest in the memory. I think goalkeeping is the best part of football. I mean, I enjoy all of, you know, what else there is in football, but for me, goalkeeping was the right thing. You just have to look at how hard it was for Manchester United to replace him after he left. They struggled for a long time. A legacy? 
possibly that he's the best goalkeeper we've, we've possibly seen. Has anybody been any better? I doubt it.